वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार सभी को ए वॉम वेलकम टू नाइनटीन वर्ल्ड एजुकेशन समिट स्कूल एजुकेशन जून एडिशन एंड वी आर ऑन द डे वन एंड वी आर ऑन दर फर्स्ट पैनल डिस्कशन एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस डिस्कशन इज एक्सुलेटिंग ए रिमोट लर्निंग रेवोल्यूशन क्रिएटिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन एजुकेशन फॉर आउटकम बेस्ड लर्निंग टू डिस्कस एंड डेलीब्रेट द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस एंड ओवर दिस टॉपिक आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस द स्पीकर ऑफ दिस सेशन So first of all, I would like to welcome Mr. Raghav Poddar, Chairman Poddar Education Group. Welcome, Raghav sir. Welcome to the World Education Summit, and for giving your precious time. I would like to welcome Mr. Abhimanyu Basu, Dean of Academics, Thirubai Ambani International School from Mumbai. Welcome, Abhimanyu sir. Welcome to the World Education Summit. I would like to welcome Dr. Amrita Vohra, Director Education, Gems Education, Gems International School from Gurgaon. Welcome, Dr. Amrita, ma'am. Welcome, World Education Summit. Thank you for giving your precious time. I would like to welcome Dr. Prem Das Maheshwari, Business Director, D2L South Asia. Welcome, Prem Das sir. Welcome back to World Education Summit. And I would like to welcome our moderator and speaker, Dr. Chandrakanta R. Patel, Principal, HBB Global Academy from Mumbai. Welcome, Chandrakanta, ma'am. Thank you for giving us these opportunities. And I would like to hand over this session to Chandrakanta, ma'am. And I would like to ask audience if. they have any queries any questions please put on the qna section we will take it live thank you chandkanta ma'am over to you ma'am can you put on your mic yes ma'am uh am i audible yes 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 Yeah. Loud and clear. Thank you, Mr. Toma. Actually, in fact, we should say a big thank you to you and Elite uh, Media because you people are giving us such a wonderful platform to think about. We can set our goal, the vision for the next five year. That from today, where we have to reach. So, thank you to the entire team. uh today's topic is accelerating a remote learning revolution creating opportunities in education for outcome based learning so in the month of march of the previous year we all witnessed a complete shutdown of the nation's entire system in fact and in particular we will talk today about educational system this deprived the students of the teacher guided learning which is a crucial factor to support their growth and development and especially in their formative years so we can think and we can't even imagine the pace of pre primary and primary learners during this time we also witnessed the opposite side of or the good side we also witnessed an incredible phenomena and that was the teachers from the various institutions from across the country collaborated in the creation and adoption of various digital infrastructures in a very very short span of time to facilitate remote teaching and learning this required teachers to learn and implement new technologies that they were not even aware of before this was a remarkable feat it has been over a year since our schools colleges and universities were shuttered we have since faced numerous challenges and overcome many of them in our endeavor to create feasible and inclusive digital infrastructures to support students online education effectively these infrastructures are beginning to emerge as viable solutions to the long standing problems of excess of quality instruction in india because we all know that our demography is very very different than other countries 
these platforms are rapidly revolving into what many are referring to as virtual classrooms equipped with all necessary paraphernalia required to implement the methods of modern pedagogy differentiated and self paced learning have become a real possibility with virtual classrooms which we might have not you know thought couple of uh, maybe two years back that these kind of technological tools can be used even in the villages in the remote areas in today's session we will share our experience and learnings with the intent of gaining a deeper insight into the nature of this digital revolution this discourse will also help us develop a better understanding of how we might best engage with this revolution to address some of the lingering challenges in education and to bring about positive changes in classroom practice so my first question you have already introduced all the panelists so i am directly going to my first panelist mr raghav podar we have seen a precipitous rise in remote learning in the recent past however in the process of developing and adopting remote learning we have faced a number of challenges could you shed light on some of the key challenges that teachers have been facing while integrating remote learning into their practice yes thank you mr chandra yes thank you chandra kanta ji for the wonderful question first of all also thank you to elets team to abhishek and to ravi ji for having me here it's my pleasure to be at the world education summit since many many years um now chandra kanta raised a very very pertinent question about what are the challenges that teachers face because eventually it's the teachers who are going to deliver that lesson well or not well and the students learning is only as good as what they understand from the teacher so while the obvious challenges that teachers faced was that a lot of teachers were fish out of sea they weren't used to this kind of technology many were not digital natives many were elderly and hadn't ever used virtual technology to really deliver lessons and then they were thrown into this deep end of the ocean and asked now to go and swim and i say hats off to all the teachers out there because most of them learned to swim very soon some spent their summer break last year and practiced and practiced and when we came back from the summer break then they were very good but the point is all teachers have really risen to the occasion and that's what matters most however instead of instead of talking about the obvious challenges that have been spoken on many education fora over the past year i'm going to be delving into something that's more deep more profound in the sense of mental health of teachers now people say that you know you should have stress free learning and stress free teaching and you know teaching is a challenging job people don't realize how challenging teaching is now some causes of that stress to a teacher emanate from the profession but many emanate from home and other societal factors now while stress free is a great catch phrase you should have stress free teachers one needs to understand that some small amount of stress is absolutely normal and is handy to increase focus and energy the problem lies is in today's world of excessive and continuous stress and the human bodies or the more specifically the hpa axis it's a part of our brain the hpa axis is natural response to stress that is the release of cortisol now that excessive frequent cortisol release wreaks havoc on our brains and reduces the ability of the prefrontal cortex the ceo of our brains because it controls i call it the ceo because it controls all the decision making executive functioning of the body so this excessive cortisol release reduces the ability of the ceo of our brains the prefrontal cortex to perform at its optimum capacity and it can actually reduce your brain in size reduce the synaptic connections between the neurons so it's incumbent upon us education leaders to ensure a conducive work environment for our teams because a stressed out teacher will not be able to deliver a good lesson and quite often she results in infecting the children with that same stress now people think education is about 
passing an exam you've seen over the last one or one month or so everything is about class 12 exams schools are not merely just buildings meant to make children pass an exam education is not just a transactional phenomenon it isn't just about transacting curriculum the fundamental crux on what good teaching learning is based on is the human relationship it doesn't matter whether it's done in a physical classroom or a virtual classroom a teacher who engages her students is the one who has a human a good conducive healthy human relationship with her students the learning centers of our brain known as the hippocampus is located right next to and connected to the emotional centers of our brain the amygdala science has repeatedly proven that this mental and emotional state of a person is the key factor to good teaching and learning processes now the beauty of the way god has designed our bodies is that we have these inbuilt natural antidotes to stress and it's a accompanying friend called cortisol these antidotes is what i call the dose to happiness what does dose stand for d stands for dopamine o for oxytocin s for serotonin and e for endorphins so we have to give ourselves a dose to happiness great but how do we get this dose to happiness well our body releases them naturally when we do the things that our bodies were meant to do things like physical exercise run skip dance jump play a sport do aerobics do yoga meditation mindfulness these simple activities bring back the oxygen circulation in the blood along with those dose chemicals and bring happiness alertness and focus even doing just 30 minutes every day of brisk physical exercise of whatever it is you enjoy doing results in your body naturally re- releasing these good chemicals and reducing your stress the levels of teaching performance and this has been proved by science again and again has a direct correlation with decreased amount of physical activity and the shifting to a sedentary lifestyle which involves only work or in many cases teachers think that oh you know i have to improve my performance so i'll bury my head in even more work no if you care so much about so much about recharging your phone's batteries pay attention to recharging your brain's batteries so in conclusion let's make in, make sure that we encourage implore and persuade our educators to get their daily time of physical activity and mindfulness and utilize these antidotes that god has given us naturally to ensure that we can achieve the highest version of ourselves because worrying does not take away tomorrow's troubles but it surely takes away today's peace all right uh, thank you so much uh, mr podar uh, your main point uh, you were highlighting the stress factor and the institutions should take care of the mental health of the teachers i will say the mental health not only of the teachers the students are facing the most they are within the four walls and because the parent have to do work from home and then children also they have to be as uh, be uh, their side so mental health whether we are having a uh, virtual classroom or physical classroom is all the time necessary so uh, your point is well taken but i believe on the top of it when we are using this uh, virtual classroom or remote learning there are number of things which your teachers might have faced within uh, you know they uh, the school has reached to their home there is no privacy in fact the parent and the students have already entered into their bedrooms into their dining halls on the top of that some of them which you said very rightly they were not aware of how to use the technology in fact their children have become their master now to train them so there are number of things and i'm sure every institution is taking care of it with this my next question goes to mr abhimanyu basu schools and educational institutes too have been trying to make significant structural changes to accommodate remote learning in their local ethos of teaching and learning what are some of the important challenges that institutions continue to face as they work to implement remote learning tools mr basu please yeah thank you uh, thank you uh... this is matter and uh, thank you everyone else here for inviting me uh, to the panel 
Uh, I feel uh, the biggest challenge is as we all started off uh, in 2020. Uh, if I start from the bottom up, I think the first problem was uh, connections and devices, which every schools and teachers had. That was the first issue, uh, which once it sorted, I think Raghav uh, had has actually shared. The second issue is that how the teachers was ready and uh, you know what the schools did about that. And I think the second issue was a lot of schools that I have heard of, they form professional learning communities because you had people who were at the end of the diff spectrum, right? So you always will have some, some who are at a beginning level whenever there is anything new which happens. So how they could learn from each other uh, was, uh, you know, how you could create that sort of community where they would feed from each other, really. Uh, and that happened uh, very actively. It has happened across schools uh, worldwide. And not only within schools, but also outside schools where people have helped, it, helped each other. I mean, there is one thing that I keep hearing from people who are in business, not in education, is that how educationists actually share and are open to share their best practices without anything which is not a common deal in businesses, which you know, because it's a, it's a top secret about everything what happens. And I think that sort of a mindset actually helps in the, the plan for collaboration. So um, all the larger communities, right, you know, um, you know, of, of different platforms, whether it's Microsoft, Apple, Google, they have their communities, you have communities within the school, outside the school. And that has actually helped to, uh, learn together your question to me what you had asked um, was about what are the challenges that we need to face or we continue to face in terms of the times and everything else i think one of the issues that we all face is green time right and i think how we can deliver quality education looking into the fact that we can come into a model of synchronous teaching as well as asynchronous teaching and how we can balance that whole activity. When you have classes which are there, which is synchronous teaching, how can that be followed up with some balance time in between uh, where there is a break time of 10 to 15 minutes? So as we went on with various models of our school, we went in and we decided that there'll be a 15 minute break between every single class and nobody will be stuck to their table at that point of time. And everybody were given some of these exercises by the yoga teacher or the PE teachers to ensure that, uh, you know, they sort of continue, uh, you know, moving in that direction. So these are uh, all the different things and it goes in line with what uh, Raghav was also sharing is that, you know, it helps to break the monotony break that sort of screen time presence and also helps them to learn uh, together. But as we move along, I think still there are two big issues which will keep uh, having an, an issue with everyone else around. One will be connectivity, which is still a problem for everyone. And therefore, I think school needs to be more mindful about recording every single lesson so that even if a child misses out due to connectivity, there is uh, they can catch up at a time of their own. I feel another large challenge uh, which every school faces is of assessments, but there are a lot of good assessment practices that we have found out. Exam.net is something which is extremely reliable that I think we use in our school through a video surveillance which sort of goes on. I know there are various schools who are using different things, but the numbers which are coming out of those assessments actually uh, are very indicative of what the numbers actually are. Uh, and I think moreover here, it's a great thing to put the onus back to the children, talk about academic honesty and honestly dealing with things because we will move much forward as a nation. I think because when nobody is watching you, what you're doing, that's your real self. Not when everybody so, is watching you and what you're doing. So we are making our students self-reliant 
they yes. uh, we are teaching them uh, what is integrity uh very well both of you have put up uh, you also said that uh, we should uh, uh, find out the assessment tools in fact what mr poda said or uh, he was saying that education is not only the marks on your mark sheet it's human relationship which we all are missing today uh, but at the same time very well uh, uh, put up that education is something beyond mark sheet which the child has in his or her head you also said that one was connectivity which i have felt you know which i have experienced just now i was out from the studio and then again i have to get in so connectivity issue is always going to be we are government and we all have to work towards it uh but the other point for assessment yes we all are trying to find out and using and experimenting different tools but it has taught us that assessment does not mean only the final mark sheet the children are getting now their grade 10th and 12th result on the basis of last two year or three year so the assessment for learning assessment as learning and finally assessment of learning that is what this period has very well taught each one of us uh my next question goes to so dr I, I, I just want to yeah i just wanted to interview intervene for one point here for you and that is that you know today the international boards because they have a continuous assessment they are actually giving a more credible result today our national it. boards are finding themselves wanting because they really yeah. do not have anything mr batsu so uh, mr batsu something uh, we don't want to say anything minus or plus or differentiate into any board uh, we all know because even uh, i am running uh, cambridge and ib school so we know how the people are doing the internal assessment therefore i said assessment as learning assessment for learning and assessment of learning that is the practice which now all national and in the board will also they are looking into it but we are not demeaning all boards are equal so my next question goes to dr amrita vohra uh, madam how could we address the challenges which mr podar and mr basu have outlined to emerging innovative technologies and management systems uh thank you for the question dr patak and i and i'm happy and i really like the ideas just shared by mr podar and mr basu we completely agree with most of the points while um, mr podar threw a lot of light on the amygdala hijack uh, which is a phenomenon we all Uh, known it since a while it does have an impact on the teacher which he was trying to say and it also has an impact on the parent as you highlighted later and the child so all stakeholders actually are affected in multiple ways and i would even add in school leaders in the same uh, thing because uh, you know that impact then continues uh, uh, unhindered so what's very very critical according to me is that in this whole process we have to remember no matter what we do no matter which technology tool we use whether we are using google or microsoft or whichever app some paid some some free and so on and i think every school has been trying to do certain things what's very critical is things need to be very very thoughtfully planned across the institution it needs we need to have what we call a shared theory a shared language and a share and then the shared tools if all stakeholders and the stakeholders here are not just the management or or teachers the students and parents if all of them have decided things and have a clear vision about what we are moving ahead towards uh, i think then that works and the stress level remains um or fear rather more importantly than just stress there are all kinds of fears that lead to that stress so any fear remains under check essentially and the fear is fear of 
very very critical again is to remember that in any classroom i mean if we go back to our own school days any classroom whether with innovative technology or without um on site or online face to face or the way we are communicating right now any classroom is all about energy emotion sometimes i hear that was a you know, peripheral thing and you know not really central but it's always actually been central to learning and teaching emotion is what energy in motion right so the energy that flows in the classroom really decides whether children are enjoying the lesson learning something out of it or all are bound in the amygdala hijack too scared to really ask the right kind of questions or any questions or their curiosity is ignited they're enjoying they're they're curious they're asking more questions they're really learning they're wanting to know more they're inquiring and so on they're thinking then learning is happening or is it the other way around that they are shut out um or they are wanting to you know just put themselves on mute uh and switch the videos off and not be there and just you know for the heck of that attendance thing just so all those things have been seen the whole idea of self regulation the whole idea which mr basu or you also pointed out whether we talk about it from an assessment point of view or learning point of view assessment is eventually you know it's it's completely intertwined with learning um so whichever way we look at it the point is that uh, if the child is really enjoying the process humor is a very critical element in the teaching learning process and enthusiasm with which everybody uh, moves ahead is a very critical element it is at the base of it if we are able to look at that the right from the person who welcomes somebody at the gate of the school to anybody and right now when we are in this virtual space again from that technology provider who is providing us a certain tool which we are using for teaching and learning to maybe a textbook maybe a resource online everything really is a is a contributor in the process and all of these need to be really really well aligned i think the classroom has for the first time transcended the idea of space and time when it is so uh, parents you pointed out earlier you know teachers are facing a very complicated scenario i mean they teaching has been considered a very private profession teachers used to be uh, i'll now say used to be i once upon a time maybe when we were kids scared of the idea of somebody observing their lesson because it was very judgmental uh, in a way it was not seen as something to uh, something that was helping me something where i was collaborating something that where i was learning and thinking of growth and and so on so the growth mindset and all those things came in but what's very important is that for parents also parents have for the first time really seen the kind of effort that goes in there is a renewed uh, while we we'll always see all all sides of the story there will always be different people with different perspectives but i think a whole lot of parents have really seen the kind of effort it takes i have seen a certain shift in the way parents talk about teachers the 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 you know the value for the guru that we used to have in our culture i think in certain ways it is coming back and that's a beautiful thing to happen and that's very necessary to happen in education what's critical is how we using innovation again data is a very very um, it's like a it's it's wonderful the way technology has made us uh, so you know made us so so happy with data in terms of it's now easier it's way more accessible and it's way way faster than to use you know the way you, as compared to the tools that we were probably using earlier and data is critical data tells its own story and uh, visualizing data tells another story so at a glance if a teacher gets to know really uh, you know where things are going right what's working what isn't and we build it into practice so do students so at a glance they also see okay this is what i did right and uh, and this worked or this did not work for me here is where i'm 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 doing things all right and it's working here is where you know i need to set my goal according to this so that analysis of data uh, envisioning things or communicating things basis of data rather than just different perceptions of different people and of course alongside the very 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 human touch which can never 
ever go away from education teachers are learners teachers i, are I completely also. agree with you dr amrita uh, and uh, taking from you this thread forward i move uh, uh, put my question to dr prem das uh, doctor uh, over the past few years before the onset of covid 19 pandemic we have been witnessing an increasing integration of digital technology with teaching learning covid 19 has actually accelerated this process so we can take it in a very very positive way so what trends and shifts brought about by technology in the teaching learning space have you been noticing over the past few years uh, thanks uh, dr chandrakanta and, and this is a fantastic question and these days we we obviously discuss ac and bc the, you know after covid and before covid and this is the scenario uh, you're talking about right. that's that's correct also now uh, what has happened ma'am is that uh, uh, pre covid uh, in the typical uh, learning scenario in india uh, in the classrooms we had uh, seen sage on this stage which has now transformed into guide by the side because by now we are digitally connected the way we are connected now now this transformation has happened essentially because of pandemic when we were per force uh, you know were made to use technology all the four key stakeholders in an education scenario and in an education system which is school management uh, teachers and faculties uh, students and parents all these four key pillars of the education ecosystem had to per force go online and digitally now the challenges as mentioned by ms podar as also uh, by ms basu are absolutely absolutely relevant and we have all gone through it but what helped uh, you know see through these challenges was adaptation of uh, digital technology or education technology so i represent the edtech part of the uh, the uh, scenario so uh, for example what uh, we provide uh, from d2l is a learning management platform called bright space which has helped large number of schools especially k to 12 schools ib schools igcsc schools to adapt uh, you know technology to see that teaching and learning is seamlessly happening with the fantastic amount of uh, deep collaboration happening between these four key stakeholders in the ecosystem now what has happened ma'am is that to ensure that proper coordination happens proper engagement between the student and faculty happens and at that too on the digital platform uh, if an uh, you know an institution or a group of institutions for example uh, podar group of institutions who have adapted a learning management platform they've seen that all the key essential components of teaching and learning which includes teaching which includes assessments and evaluation of assessments which also includes detailed amount of data analytics are seamlessly happening through the uh, use of digital platforms now what has also happened uh, uh, and especially when we had uh, the new education policy nep 2020 being announced last year they have asked all the educational institutions to follow what is called as competency based education or outcome based education we call it uh, as a cbe model cbe uh, essentially asks Uh, 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 you know, an institution to map various competencies that they wish to see each and every student gain during his learning journey with the institution, and ensure that those competencies are in, are learned by the students, and students grow from one competency level to the other. Manually, uh, it's very very difficult process to ensure that each and every individual learner is is on the right competency enhancement track, but digitally, it has happened. with the institutions who have adapted a learning management platform using competency based education have ensured that they are able to deliver individualized or personalized learning because now learning is happening on the individual space so what has happened is that if you are able to identify the uh, outcome or learning competencies and then align those competencies to each and every content that is available on the platform or the teacher is teaching and also align those competencies with the assessments then you can ensure that uh, the digital platform takes care of mapping of those competencies and attainment of those competencies as the student moves from one stage to the other also it is critically important to see that immense amount of data analytics is used to to ensure each and every students individual students competencies are mapped because you would agree that each and every student has a different learning requirement 
and that learning requirement needs to be juxtaposed with what is being taught to him by the institution as also the teacher and that is actually be uh, made possible if an immense amount of data analytics is used that helps an institution to identify at risk students data analytics competency based education helps the institution to identify the students who are lagging behind in certain topics so they can actually you can drill down into each and every individual student's competencies in terms of how he has progressed in a particular topic or even sub topic or even uh, uh, you know a small part of that topic so you can identify what, what are the areas or topics where students finding difficulty in comprehending and take appropriate uh, action and give those additional uh, inputs to that student so all that has happened and that all has happened ma'am just because of use of digital technologies and indian schools uh, I, i would say have adopted the uh, learning management platforms used uh, these yeah. competency based tools and uh, now have transformed right now uh thank you so very much uh doc uh, mr podar uh to point out the mental health human relationship uh mr basu or uh, to give us uh, the challenges and the structural changes uh and the importance of internal assessments uh dr vora to give us addressing these challenges what were brought out by mr podar and mr basu and dr das uh addressing it that how we have adopted all across our country the technology and the shift uh, and use it to the optimum for the teaching learning space uh dear uh, friends i am moving for the second round of questions but a very important point we have taken little more time it's already 12:32 and the time limit given to us is 12:45 so i will not be able to give more than 2 minutes to each one of you for the second round of questions otherwise we will be left out for concluding remark which is equally important so quickly i throw my second question to uh, ragu podda ji uh, one of the advantages of the remote learning revolution is that it has provided teachers with a number of digital tools to keep students engaged and not only in the classroom even beyond the classroom uh learning activities based on games is an example of this uh actually uh, some of the teachers are using these games strategy as their formative assessment tools it is uh, uh positive that this will lead to a better student engagement and outcomes so my question to you is in your view how is digital technology and the remote learning revolution helping your schools and institutes in shifting their focus towards outcome based learning only absolutely. to absolutely and you're right because the education system of the entire world the way education is being delivered to students is at the cusp of a dimensional shift the way curriculum was transacted up until now has been disrupted by this pandemic and we have to ensure it's for the better the way this pandemic hit us there's no doubt in anyone's mind that digital transformation is changing the way education is delivered in classrooms across the world more importantly though is the purpose aligned with the way the trends are emerging in this hot pursuit of the latest in ble ar vr and other digital transformations have we missed the woods for the trees it's not a question of if but when at least some of these technologies will become mainstream in schooling across the globe and while learning outcomes is definitely the most important thing along with lesson delivery and engagement and building and cultivating curiosity inside a child's brain the new normal that's going to come is going to be hybrid blended or what is being called digital the mix of physical and digital but the fundamental question still lies is are we serving the purpose of education getting our children ready with those future ready skills or are we just sitting and finding fancy ways of lesson delivery through e pedagogues there is no better time than a crisis that forces us to grow and wakes us up from the slumber of rudimentary pedagogy we can ill afford an other education system that tests students in and prepares students for skills that they won't even require in their 21st century lifetimes this is that time of transition where those trends are still forming and evolving and it's incumbent upon us especially education thought leaders and influencers who have to shoulder this responsibility to steer this evolution of education in the direction which will truly benefit our 21st century students the most 
our posterity will look back in this time as one of those defining moments that comes once in centuries. And they're going to either thank us for the direction in which we took education, or they're going to curse us for not rising up to the occasion when we had the opportunity. Great. So uh, you, it reminds me once again, what you are saying is that need or the necessity is the mother of invention. That's what we all are doing nowadays. Uh, my next question goes to uh, Mr. Abhimanyu Basu. Tools of remote learning are undergoing innovative changes rapidly. Almost every day we learn of some tools invented by someone that helps teachers address more efficiently the challenges they are facing. But will remote learning remain relevant and continue to grow even after we resume face-to-face -face learning? What do you think is the future scope of remote learning? I think uh, honestly, seeing how the whole situation is evolving around the world, I feel that we are still quite a bit away from going back completely to face to face learning. Uh, hybrid will be a beginning, but I do not know, I do not think anyone in the world has an answer on when would that be. Uh, looking at how the rest of the countries in the world are moving, I think it will be only once sixty seven percent of the population is vaccinated. We should look at a timeline of December, January, at the earliest of parents feeling confident of sending their children back to school, or even governments thinking that way. In the meanwhile, and even moving forward, remote learning will be a part of the normal learning procedures. And therefore, I think as schools, we need to consolidate our practices to see that what works for us. Uh, especially the aspect of uh, learning and the focus on learning. And I completely agree with what Mr. Kutar was saying at the beginning and even, even with his other answer at this point in time, that we must give a lot of emphasis on human connections because that is what is truly missing in the schools today. Schools need to rediscover on how to connect or make human connections in this remote hybrid setting. Because the children who are 13, 14 hours up to 18, they rely a lot on their friends. Uh, many of the teachers even, uh, you know, have gone through uh, a lot. And they just need to see that how we can make them feel supported by the members that they are getting. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh uh, talk, uh, Mr. Basu, uh, nobody can replace face-to-face -face learning or because that gives you the human touch, human connect, human bond. Uh, we all know that we all are going through this phase. Uh, but definitely remote learning, as you say, is going to remain an integral part of our future learning system. Maybe uh, that learning will take place uh, uh, the contextual part of the concepts at home through this remote learning and more practical part can be done in the school premises uh, we all are working together towards it now yeah. my next question with, with goes the, to the with the with the nep and the direction this is the right stimulus to move the country uh, education to the next level very true very true uh, uh so with this my next question goes to dr prem das uh private enterprises have played a decisive role in shaping the remote learning technologies that we have become so reliant on together these enterprises now constitute an entire industry commonly referred to as the edtech industry in your view, what more could be done to better enable schools and educational institutions to collaborate and work together with this emerging industry to meet the need of the future more effectively? Uh, thanks, ma'am, for the question. And I think it's very critical and important for all the education institutions to 
foresee uh, the industry requirements once the students pass out from their schools and institutions. The industry requirements is, is, is actually gazing towards a scenario towards the job requirements and opportunities which have not yet uh, been seen by any of, uh, one of us. One thing is very, very clear to all of us uh, is that remote learning is here to stay in the Indian education system. Uh, and though the, 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 the vision and the view of the way it will be, uh, be actually existing in the Indian education system could be different. It could be established uh, as a side-by-side -side or a parallel or a complementary system, but then it has to stay, not just because of the important features it's, uh, it provides and the digital native nature of children today, but given the fact that every school has used and experienced the remote teaching methodologies through the pandemic. Schools, uh, you know, both large and small have experienced technology and we are at the phase of expanding and experience, uh, you know, as a way of forward, uh, rather to take a step back to where we were. And the need for education are changing at rapid pace. We all know that. We are witnessing major shifts happening in the workplaces around the globe. Too. And the skills needed tomorrow may not even be discovered today, as I mentioned earlier. Hence, with the you know, given situation, we should strive to prepare our students for tomorrow with these skills that will help them by the employment uh, and be employment ready. And one of the things that I mentioned in my earlier conversation was to actually vehemently follow competency-based education model, which is the need of the hour today, and ensure that we all these schools work on the competency enhancement and development of each and every student so that we are making them future ready and job ready for tomorrow. Thank you so much. Excellent. Uh, very well said that NEP is giving us number of things. We can take internal assessment from the different international boards and as you are saying competency based because finally we need not to prepare our children uh, to give us the road memory on the piece of paper we want them to prepare as a problem solver Absolutely. and they can take their own decisions so very well said by all four of you uh, my last question goes to dr amrita vora uh, COVID-19 pandemic compelled all of us to not only adopt digital technology to support learning, but also to add to it and modify it to meet the needs of our students and address the unique challenges we face more effectively. And these challenges will be different from institute to institute, place to place, it depends. So in the recent past, how have you adapted, customized and personalized remote learning tools to better meet the needs of your students? Thank you, Dr. Patak. Uh, well, as everybody has just pointed out, the pandemic has clearly been a watershed moment and alongside the NEP. So there's a whole lot of rethinking required and I think we're all on it. What's very, very critical here is to remember there will not be and there should not be any one kind of unidimensional approach. There need to be a multitude of curriculum and like you said, unique requirements of the child needs the opportunity to really pick that this is what I want to study. This is why I want to really go deeper into this. And these are the aspects of this thing. So the detail of it, I'm not talking about just subject choices. But within those, uh, there is a very, very wide zone. Subjects, after all, also don't exist in glass walls in the real world. So within that, the choosing of how I want to go about it is also something that needs to be personalized. Similarly, school design itself, the way we think of school itself has to be reimagined. The way we think of teaching and learning, of course, or learning and teaching, rather, of course, is already reimagined, which is why I have always believed that We've long moved from being just stage on stage to uh, facilitator to actually now being co-learners as educators in the process because we are learning every day, evolving and experiencing this every day. One of the things, so to go a little deeper the past, when the pandemic happened, the lockdown happened or began in India, uh, thankfully we were very well prepared because we were already the teachers were already trained it was writing on the wall so things were kind of in place and since uh, our other schools across the globe were ready our readiness was way better but uh, as things progressed of course 
we've all had challenges like everyone else and we've gone ahead reinventing ourselves every step of the way because every uh, again every adversity means opportunity and a, and 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 some things help you learn some things um help you grow uh, so that's what it is essentially been so every day is a reinvention a rethinking and that's beautiful the professional learning communities have really worked together that's been i think the most important thing for us no top down approach works in such a scenario yes of course you have to kind of uh, lead the way uh, a little uh, show the direction a little but what really works well is every stakeholder coming together and teachers really leading cpd sessions also for each other everyone exploring innovating together that culture works the best way and so we no longer talking about just a future of education a future there is no one future. there are futures of education that we need to look at because children today we today cannot predict 10 years from now what are the kind of jobs they are not even invented yet what are we really preparing them for if we can ensure that we are working on making them good human beings and happy ones i think the rest will really fall in place thank you thank you dr vora uh, that uh, complete uh, brings us actually the time is over but i am taking liberty from the host if i can just take 5 minutes more and take one concluding remark from each of my panelists uh for the benefit of our audience and fellow panelists could each one of you share just one best practice that you have adopted at your institution and how will the accelerating digital revolution in education further aid the remote learning revolution any one best practice from each one of you and you can any uh, let me start with uh, doc, uh, mr raghapoda so Uh, the one best practice that i would like to focus on is heuristic learning what is known as heutagogy so from pedagogy moving to heutagogy what that basically means is self directed self led self owned learning for a student which is the highest form of learning that can occur inside a child's brain or inside a human's brain where you make them the owner of that learning so you make give them the project and let them decide what are the problems what are the things they want to solve put them in front and center instill faith belief power trust and empower the students and if you do that they will go and fly because children live up to labels if you have a label that you are fantastic at this they are going to live up to that label so heuristic learning heutagogy is my one best practice thank you thank you uh, mr apoda uh, my next concluding remark i want from uh, mr abhimanyu basu i i feel uh, what really works in a school scenario is promoting organic growth amongst all the constituents which means teachers students and parents they need to own every single new practice that we that's the only way that they will be happy with it unless people are happy and they love what they're doing they are not going to move forward in school uh dr prendas uh, uh ma'am uh, i'm a uh, you know uh, i really really love uh, competency based education and wish that all the institutions in india adapt to competency based education as an alternative teaching methodology that would include focus on you know you know discreetly measurable competencies self paced learning mastery based programs and real time granular feedback mechanism between the teacher school management faculty and parents and of course uh, the real time granular feedback would also include uh, flexible uh, grading systems so i think these are the areas where, where i would recommend and and love uh, where the school uh, institutions to adapt thank you so much great uh, dr amrita yeah so since uh, mr podar has already highlighted utagavi and um, competency based learning is also something that we already have been doing for years now uh i will add to that the power of yet and the power of because we are living in an age of continuous invention and there is no finish line so i think it's very critical to always believe and have everybody believe in the power of yet uh 
and whatever we are doing next whatever maybe new technology maybe new idea maybe anything that we are inventing or moving ahead with it why asking that why and if every one of us believes in it and owning it that i think is very critical as we are in this kind of a process of change or transition thank you uh, dr amrita wonderful comments from each one of you and i'm sure our audience uh, will be benefited by each one of uh, uh, these uh, comments which you people have given be it mental health human relationship assessment process uh, making uh, uh, competence based learning uh, national education policy integration uh, all the things uh, make uh, the children self reliant make them that they are their own master for integrity and honesty taking help from the parents they are our uh, you know very very important partner uh, in learning process uh, uh, everything we people and yes that this remote learning is going to remain a part and parcel of our learning process so it is important at this stage of the revolution to share our experiences and learnings and to collaborate to find best possible solutions to the unique challenges we face and that is what we people have done today over time uh, such collaboration and cooperation will result in organic evolution of a viable digital infrastructure tailored to meet the unique needs of our students and institutions such collaboration will also ensure that major stakeholders students teachers and parents get time and proper environment to adopt new ways of teaching and learning i would like to close this session by reiterating that we are witnessing here a remarkable revolution in education that is poised to change the way we interact learn and teach we have achieved a remarkable feat in the previous year by adopting new models of teaching new modes of teaching in a very short time aimed a severe crisis and we all know this pandemic or this situation is once in century and we were all not prepared but yes we all have sailed through brilliantly this has shed light on the latent potential that exists in the teachers community uh, one amongst you said that yes our teachers have done a commendable job they have prepared themselves and their people are you know struggling they are learning and then they are making our children to learn we need to find ways to nurture this potential and put it to the best use with that i wish you all the best stay safe stay healthy i hand over charles back to the host uh, thank you ma'am mr abhishek uh, thank if you, you have any questions or anything or whatever i we have some questions but we will take it offline ma'am actually we have seven to eight questions we will put you on the mail and if it seems worthy you can all the panelists can report on that so till then ma'am we have to close this session as we are already upon the time so i request all my audience that you can follow our speakers on the social handle as well they are pretty much active on the social handle please ask some gen genuine queries please ask some genuine questions so that they can get back to you so i request by this aman to please share the token of appreciation from the world education summit side to all our speakers so this host the speaker said we presented to mr abhimanyu basu dean of academics through by imani school thank you abhimanyu sir for giving your precious time to us it's always a pleasure to have you and speaker certificate is given to our speaker and moderator dr chandrakanta r pathak principal hvb global academy from mumbai thank you chandrakanta ma'am thank you for giving your precious time always a clean moderation from your side and dr prem das maheshwari business director desire to learn south asia thank you prem das sir thank you very much for giving your precious time to us and giving a wonderful deliberation that tech segment dr amrita vohra director education gems india gems international school
from Kulgaon. Thank you, Dr. Amrita, for giving your precious time to us. It's always been a pleasure for you every World Education Summit. And our speaker set will be presented to Mr. Raghav Pota, Chairman, Potar Education. Thank you, Raghav, sir. Thank you very much for giving your precious time to us.